everybody time metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well so in this one we're getting into hurricane season for the weather nerd 101 list this is going to be a pretty basic video here we're mainly going to be talking about how to pick up on some signs of tropical development it's not always a guarantee there's a number of things that kind of go into it but in any case we'll, we'll kind of get you started on the basics here so hopefully you guys enjoy this video hopefully you're smashing that like button hitting that subscribe button also hitting that share button and i've noticed recently that my videos aren't always getting out to people so in order to fix that make sure you have that notification bell on too so that should help maybe allow you to see more of my videos here but in any case though let's go ahead and get into it here so i know maybe not everybody here knows how a hurricane develops but i'm gonna break it down for you in the most simple manner possible as far as like how to pick up on these as we all know these hurricanes form over water and most thunderstorms form with a point of low pressure kind of catch my drift here basically if we're looking if we're finding a point of low pressure or an air uh, low surface pressure area here on the, over the water there's a chance that we'll get some convection we'll get those storms to fire and these storms of course are fed by warm moist air so you can kind of Get, you can kind of get my drift here but in any case if you see an area like this start to develop and then you start to see a little bit of vorticity or a little bit of spin counterclockwise spin you're off to a good start here and there's many models that you can use to look at this for example i'm just using the operational gfs here i honestly prefer to use ensembles but in any case if I were to look at this and you see these little um, isobars here, if you start to see those tighten up around the storm system, that's something you need to raise a brow at, keep an extra close eye on. Right now, obviously, looking at this model run, there isn't anything to talk about in particular. But as time goes on here, that starts to get your attention a little bit more. You see, like I said, those isobars are starting to tighten up around that, forming a little bit of a ring, a point of circulation. And that's what's been interesting me over the last couple of days, honestly, myself. This is a current run at the time I'm making this video. So it could be a storm system to keep an eye on over towards the Gulf Coast states as we head towards, let's say, about a week and a half from now. In any case, as we continue to go forward here, notice how as that encloses, you see a point of low pressure here. Usually when that point of low pressure reaches below 1,000 millibars because the stronger the storm usually the pressure will drop a bit more so seeing this this is a pretty solid storm not an incredible tropical system but it could be a tropical storm as time goes on so i have no idea where this is going because we're pretty much in no man's land i don't like to really hype up anything especially if it's 240 hours out because there are some forecast models that don't even go out that far even it's only a handful that do so not a lot of information to go off with go off with with just one model available but in any case here like i said that's a pretty brief rundown on how to find tropical systems here just based off of really one model of course you can look at others like me personally I, like i said i prefer to look at ensemble models so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the region here and look at the north atlantic as a whole and there's a particular run that i like to look at here or a particular parameter i like to look at it's the mean uh it's the mean sea level pressure map here but this also shows pressure centers like i said before we're looking for low pressure so anywhere where you see those red numbers in these uh more concentrated colors here the oranges maybe even the reds or not even really red you'll just see more yellow and orange if anything else that's a point of interest so like i said Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean looks pretty hot. So we continue to go forward here. Of course, this is a different model than just the GFS operational ensemble run. So the results that you see from that could be different. But if you make your model comparison using this, then you see something, then you have higher confidence in something developing. So as we continue to go forward here, starting out, we don't see a whole lot. As we continue to go forward here, notice how the colors start to brighten up. I don't see anything yet in particular that indicates an area of low pressure from the ensemble until a bit later on. And then here we go. That's starting to look a little bit more organized. 
but like I said when these isobars start to tighten up and form almost a circle that's almost high level confidence certainty that something develops here but right now we're not quite seeing that at the moment but this area is favorable from what I can see just based off that when you see an area like this with the blue numbers here this is an area of high pressure high pressure usually will mean fair what more fair weather stable weather so you see something like this you see the blue numbers nothing to be concerned with and high pressure is an absolute enemy when it comes to tropical systems as well so wouldn't be too concerned about the run that I'm seeing here just based off the ensemble. Of course, there are other ensembles that I look at as well. I'm not going to go over them all because then this turns into like a 50 minute or maybe even an hour and a half long video. There's also, of course, the hurricane models here. And I tend to use these more personally when I end up seeing something develop. But right now, the probability is low. So I'm not going to I'm not going to really get into these this time around. If you want to see more advanced video maybe we'll make one in the future or if you're a member you'll see an advanced video in the near future but in any case though when you put two and two together you put all the models together with uh, the conditions that we already have available with the sea surface temperatures particularly around of course let me actually go and look at the north atlantic as a whole here there we go so seeing this area in the yellow in particular here Caribbean, the Gulf. This is uh, pretty much a hotbed for tropical development. There is one thing that can limit that, and that is actually wind shear. Contrary to what some may believe, you have to have the wind shear blowing in a certain direction. Usually, west to east will help, or sometimes east or east to west, excuse me, will help. But the thing to make note of: if those winds are too strong. It can keep things kind of limited here. So we're going to go back, and right now, and this is the main reason why we're not seeing anything in the short term developing. All this red right here, this is really strong wind shear. As time goes on, we may start to see some lightening up of the wind shear here. But it's not going to ha happen for a while here on, the, on these model runs. For the most part, we're seeing pretty strong wind shear on, all across the board here in the Gulf and through a good chunk of the Caribbean do have this little pocket here that pops up later so depending on how things pan out there may be an opportunity for something to develop of course depending on where these little low pressure areas that are on land end up panning out could get something to pop up here these uh these systems can occur whenever they're on the uh southern fringe of a frontal boundary so that's always something to keep an eye on. So if, a storm, so if a storm system is coming through the lower 48, always watch towards the Gulf, especially if that low is placed a little bit further to the south. You can get something to spin up pretty quickly. Typically, I wouldn't expect it to be strong, but in either case, it definitely warrants attention. But in this case, though, the reason why we're not seeing tropical development in the early stages of this season right now mainly is going to be due to wind shear. Waters are very warm as we already just saw. So that being said, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, obliterate that share button. Also make sure you get that notification bell on. Make sure you can get notifications to all of my videos. That being said, I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you very soon. Take care.